I've been doing this now for about uh, 11 years uh, and I got into it because my daughter one day came home and said, Daddy, I don't want to be a Muslim and she was only seven. Uh, I was sitting at home minding my own business, doing, you know, getting on with my life and I, I felt compelled 11 years ago to get involved in this. If we look at what's happened over the last 11 years, yes, there are some negatives and the negatives are that we've had more um, youngsters, people that have gone out to join ISIL in Iraq and Syria. But one of the things I feel really optimistic about is that 11 years ago there were only one or two Muslims who were British in the whole of the UK that were actually challenging extremism from within, that had the courage, that actually got past the denial uh, factor that we were suffering from. Now uh, I'm so optimistic that we can attract the people, the calibre of people, to speak up, to get involved. One of the things that I'm finding more and more, about, again I go back about 10 years ago, I remember I was on the media, I was on some BBC programme or something, Panorama or something, and I said something then uh, to express the fact that we've got a problem within our British Muslim communities. Not community, but communities, because there is a difference between us all. And I remember going into a mosque on a Friday, and coming out of Friday prayers, and a particular, somebody asked me, are you Harris Rafiq? And I said yes, and the next thing I thought was a fist flying. And that was 11 years, 10, 10 years ago before Quilliam even existed. Uh, and I got into the habit then, whenever, whenever anybody asked me, are you Harris Rafiq? I sort of got in the habit of saying no. But recently, I've, over the last year and a half, two years, there is a distinct change. Now when people ask me on the street, are you Harris Rafiq? And I say yes, more and more Muslims who are in the middle ground, who are not necessarily part of the regressive political left or the far-right Islamist extremism are coming, a lot, coming up to us and saying, thank you very much for actually making us look normal as Muslims. Thank you very much for saying the things that we actually um, would be a little bit hesitant to say uh, in the media because of potential backlash from other parts of the communities. Uh, so I think there is a, uh, the middle ground is shifting. 10 or 11 years ago, it was much worse than this. When my daughter came home and said to me, Daddy, I don't want to be Muslim when she was seven, I thought, here's a young girl that doesn't know anything about Islam. She doesn't know the faith. She doesn't know anything about geopolitics. She doesn't know anything about life, really. She sees mummy and daddy uh, praying when mummy and daddy are feeling particularly pious or fasting during Ramadan. And it did set a chain of events in my own development, spiritual development, where of course, I wanted to, to know whether the only way you could be a Muslim was to be angry. So I, I ended up in some places around the world, uh, some, you know, some spiritual retreats, uh, going to Indonesia, Malaysia, the Middle East and various places. And I came back to the UK full circle, realising that the Islam that my father brought to this country in 1953, where there's no dichotomy between being British and Muslim, and that the faith really is an individual, personal relationship that one has between God and the individual, and that can be interpreted in so many different ways, is what the majority of Muslims practice. And that gave me, I think, the travel around the world and finding teachers who can actually help develop me spiritually. Uh, and for me personally, it was, it was returning back to a Sufi path uh, that my father uh, I grew up in a Sufi household and then I sort of rejected a, you know, parts of it. But really coming back to that spiritual inner moral excellence, um, really realising that there really isn't just one particular road to God or one particular path to God, and it just so happens that Islam is the one that I was taught with, raised with. I felt very comfortable with it, with my faith then, and I felt very comfortable with my relationship with God.